All right, happy Halloween, everybody. Any, any dresser-uppers out there? No? Good. That'd be weird. <laughs> um, I thought about dressing up as Anthony Wood. Um, I have a, uh, a picture of him, though, for you. He's kind of off to the left there. There he is. That's Anthony. That's my boss. Um, I am new at Roku. Um, oh, Anthony says hi. Um, uh, I'm, I'm new, though. I've, uh, I've only been here since the beginning of October, but Anthony and I have been working together for a couple of decades, as scary as that sounds. Um, we actually uh, started a company uh, called iBand back in the early 90s, um, and iBand was ultimately sold to Macromedia. Um, it became uh, Dreamweaver, it's, and Adobe eventually bought Macromedia, so now it's Adobe Dreamweaver, which is probably the most popular tool for making web pages these days. Um, that's how I got started with Anthony. Um, and while we were toiling away at Macromedia building that business, um, he managed to, in his spare time, invent the DVR. Um, yeah, he's an amazing guy. He, um, he, uh, he left Macromedia earlier than I did. I was still under contract over there and, and uh, refined his invention. And as it got closer to commercialization, I was able to leave and joined him to head sales and marketing at Replay. And uh, we launched the world's first DVR there, um, which was a lot of fun, rocket ship. DirecTV owns it now. Um, does anybody remember Replay or did anybody have one? Yeah, one person, all right. It's better than getting skunked out. We sold a bunch of them. We sold hundreds of thousands of them. We were kind of neck and neck with TiVo for a long time. Um, but when we were there, we spent a lot of time talking about the internet. Um, you know, it really wasn't an internet product, but uh, we talked about the internet a lot because we could see this vision where, um, you know, everything would be in the cloud. We didn't call it cloud at the time. It was client server. Everything would be on servers. And, uh, you know, at that point, uh, why would you need to record stuff if, uh, you know, everything you could ever want was, was up in the cloud? And it was a very exciting vision for us. We were already putting Ethernet ports on the back of the box and, you know, any kind of firewire, any kind of networking hardware we could come up with. I don't even think Wi-Fi existed really back then. Um, but, uh, but we put a lot of energy into uh, thinking about the Internet. Um, it actually scared us in a way because we knew that it would ultimately obsolete the DVR. And a lot of the people you see in this picture are actually from Replay. I think it's a little bit ironic that, you know, the same crew is... Um, taken that leadership role, really, in, in, in building the streaming marketplace, which will ultimately obsolete the DVR that, that the same crew uh, invented under Anthony's leadership. Um, you know, we weren't alone in that, in that vision. I have a, a funny uh, video to play for you. Um, it's 1999. What kind of rooms you got? King size. You got room service? Donuts and coffee. Got entertainment? All rooms have every movie ever made in every language, anytime, day or night. How was that possible? Could your business use the bandwidth to change everything? Ride the light. Quest. Yeah, it was a TV commercial back in the 90s. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't really a... Uh, an original vision. Uh, everybody could start to see it even back then. Um, that was Quest. They're out of business now, I think. <laughs> um, uh, I was excited about it. I was so excited that after we, we ended up selling Replay basically because of the bubble burst and all that. Uh, and I went and started another company called Akimbo, um, which, uh, you know, is arguably the first company that ever, um, that, that really commercialized a internet-based VOD service, um, specifically for viewing on televisions. We had a set-top box, and it was similar to Roku, except we had to use a download model back in those days. Um, not enough bandwidth for streaming. It, anybody remember Akimbo? Yeah, one person again, all right. You guys are just trying not to make me feel bad. So anyway, that was me. Um, it was it was way too early. You know, we couldn't get good, good content. Consumer behavior, you know, consumers just weren't ready for that kind of thing. Um, and little did I know, it was a a very long road to hoe. I mean, we've been working on this for you know, the, the the notion of getting video over the internet to the TV for 15 years. Um, and I have to say, you know, standing up here in front of you guys, I'm feeling 
I don't know if vindicated is the right word. I'm feeling uh, like, uh, uh, like we've achieved uh, uh, really a new level of success. Um, for a while, I thought, you know, maybe it's not going to happen. Um, you know, after, after we wrapped up Akimbo, um, you know, we had tried twice, two swings at the plate. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I just thought maybe, you know, maybe this isn't ever going to work out rights-wise in my lifetime. Or if it does, maybe it'll only be on laptops and mobile phones because, you know, TVs are going to go out of style and all the kids just use laptops today anyway. And I just really couldn't relate to any of that because I love my TV. Um, but, uh, you know, the, uh, here's another metaphor for you. Um, this switch has flipped. I mean, it's really, just even the last year, um, the momentum for streaming is, is incredible. Um, it's, it's becoming mainstream. It is mainstream consumer behavior now. Um, you know, uh, we have a statistic here um, that, we, uh, that we got from Cisco. Um, globally, 55% of all Internet traffic will be video in just four years. Um, so it's becoming the majority of what's on the Internet. Um, it's... Uh, it's um, getting to the point where, uh, let's see, there are 47 million um, households uh, in, in, by the end of this year who are streaming. Uh, so that is truly a mainstream experience. We've, we've, uh, we've, hit, we've hit the mass market finally um, after 15 years of the slog. Um, estimating 325 million connected devices um, uh, so, uh, so these households have multiple devices. It's not just one device per household. It can be a game console. It can be a streaming box. Uh, it can be a connected TV. Um, the category for standalone boxes, which is our category at Roku, has uh, grown 80% uh, year over year. So it's practically doubling each year. And, and revenues are even, uh, are even, you know, depending on how you look at it, doubling, tripling uh, each year in this category. So it's a very, very fast growth category. Um, I even notice it at home. I don't want to do, do a show of hands. In the last six months or, or, or so, have you noticed your Internet connection being impacted at home? Is it slowing down? Is it slowing down for you? A good number of people. Not, not too bad. It worries me, you know. Um, I, I mean, the... They'll, they'll keep, you know, putting fiber in the ground and doing what they need to do. But, you know, that slowdown is starting to happen, and it's because the consumer adoption is, is starting to go even faster than the infrastructure, finally, after 15 years of the long slog. Um, you know, it's just the, the, the traffic is, is really becoming tremendous. Um, in 2016, we're looking at 68 million households, nearly 70 million households, uh, using the TVs uh, uh, with the Internet. Um, we believe that eventually that will be standard. All TVs will be connected to the Internet, um, and eventually people will be getting most of their content, if not all of their content, over the Internet. Um, don't know how long it will take, probably another 15 years, but, uh, but it's definitely going that way. Um, another amazing statistic, I think, is half a billion devices, just the U.S., half a billion devices uh, will have been deployed in just four years that are capable of taking uh, streaming video and putting it on your TV. Um, so um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, you almost can't buy a TV now without the feature. Um, and it's getting to the point where there's such a critical mass of content that is on the Internet that's not even available on linear or, or, or through pay TV that you kind of need it or you're going to miss something, um, which is exciting. Um, I think another, another indication of the shift, this makes me feel a little less stupid, that indeed TV is now the primary method for watching video on the Internet. So it's always been PCs, right, or maybe mobile or whatever. Um, changes happen. It's you know, a boomerang came back. I'm trying to think of more metaphors. Um, it's uh, it's finally um, you know couch potato time with the internet. That's that's uh, most of the video going over the internet is going to a TV, um, which uh, which is a which is a big shift. TV's not going out of style after all. Uh, similarly, if you look at the amount of video, um, so w when folks are watching, watching video on their tablet, you know, maybe the last five minutes on average, 
uh, average for TV is 15 minutes, so 3x what you'd see on a tablet, almost an order of magnitude more than what you would see on a mobile phone. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the impact, the ability to monetize the value of the video, the value of that viewer is, uh, on the Internet is really shifting to the TV. And so we believe that you'll see uh, content starting to uh, pay attention to that. Um, I'm curious, how many folks here are, you know, with content? Say studio, TV network, some kind of copyright holder, production company. Yeah. You guys are my peeps. Um, we're opening an office uh, in, in L.A. Uh, specifically to focus on, on uh, you guys, and uh, I get to lead that office. Um, our, our services and, and uh, content division will be, will be managed out of here, um, and that's really the reason why Anthony had me come to this show, um, to uh, kind of get introduced to you all. Uh, who else is here? We've got um, uh, how, how many folks are, are service providers, consultants, um, accountants, lawyers? Not that many. Okay, how about people in the technology business? Yeah, yeah you guys are my peeps too. Um, good. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, another I think really important point here about uh, about streaming to TVs is um, it's been a nerd fest for a long time, right? It's been very, very um, geeky. Just hooking up devices, streaming from the PC. You've got to be like your own personal IT department to have streaming working to your TV, and that, that's the way it had been. Um, but companies like Roku, uh, Apple doing their share, um, the, the consumer electronics companies, Samsung, Sony, Panasonic, and like, have been working at it to the point where it is no longer a nerd fest. It's getting um, really quite mainstream. Um, people who stream are not early adopters anymore. They're very mainstream. They're very typical TV watchers. Um, I'm constantly, um, you know, looking to try to find, okay, so how do we, you know, how would we um, market differently? How would we, um, you know, do anything to, to sort of focus on our target market? Well, it turns out our target market is TV watchers. Um, it's, it's everybody. Um, you know, these are people who want value. They're people who want selection. Um, people who look for uh, convenience, people who look for ease of use, um, and you know those are those are kind of the traits. Um, so I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use Roku audience as kind of a proxy for streamers in general. Um, we have about three million, uh, we, we've sold over three million devices, uh, so I think it's statistically significant anyway. Um, and uh, you know when we when we look at these and we kind of map them against the demographics of the world, it doesn't skew very much. Uh, surprisingly, the purchasers are male, uh, but the users in the house are everybody. You know, pretty much the way you would expect standard TV watching to occur. Um, uh, I think it's amazing that 17% um, of our users are over 65. Um, uh, There's a real testament to the to you know how far we've come in terms of ease of use and, and uh, selection and, and value overall. Um, I don't know how that actually compares to the real population, but my guess is it's probably pretty close. That's what I keep finding when I look at these numbers is, you know, sure we skew a little bit in San Francisco Bay Area and LA and those kinds of things, but geographically, it's all over the place. Urban, it's rural, it's suburban, it's, it's, um, it's, it spreads the way TV spreads. Uh, so it's become a very, very mainstream experience. Um, Interesting to point out that uh, more than the majority of them have other devices. They have multiple streaming devices, like maybe an Xbox or a connected TV, but uh, they do choose to use their Rokus. Um, and 80% uh, and of those are, are using it on their primary TV, so this isn't a secondary room activity. Um, uh, I think even, even more interesting than that is that it's their main source. I mean, for, for more, more people go to their Roku first to watch TV than go to their cable box. Um, you know, it's not like people are noodling around with their cable box and they get frustrated, they can't find anything, so they go, they go look around on, they go look around on the internet. It's not that way at all. Um, I, I, I remember uh, working with one of our news providers recently and they were kind of blown away. Um, when we looked at the results for the debates and, um, you know, during the debates, live during the debates, their Roku channel, just the viewership shot through the roof. Um, and, you know, they asked the question, well, why, you know, it's on practically every TV channel. You can't miss it. Just turn on TV. It's there. Why would you go stream it? 
Well, it's because they don't even turn on the TV. They turn on the Roku. That's where they go first, and they turn it on. And so the notion of watching live TV on the Internet is, um, is, uh, is catching on because, you know, it's their user interface. It's, it's what they use to watch TV. Um, so this is a big, big change. <clears throat> and, you know, as far as things like streaming through Blu-ray players or over the air or using DVD players, I mean, those, those platforms are almost de minimis. Uh, you know, you, some people might think of, uh, well, your Roku's kind of fifth in line after the, the Blu-ray player and the, the game console and the cable box and you know, blah, blah, blah. Not the case. Um, it, is, it is how these people are watching. I think eight of you are going to be lucky Roku owners by the end of the show here. Um, Over-the-top platforms are shifting. Uh, you know, obviously it was PCs mainly uh, in the olden days, um, a couple years ago, even a year ago. Um, Microsoft's been working real hard to get Xbox uh, working for video, and so that platform, game consoles generally, have popped into the lead as uh, as the number one streaming platform. Um, but they're not growing as fast because um, it's really kind of an install base thing. You know, there's an install base of game players, and they've been convincing those people to start streaming video. Um, but it's not like people are running out to buy Xboxes in order to stream video. Um, people are buying new TVs, as they always do, and people are rushing out to buy streaming boxes in the case that they don't want to buy a new TV or in the case that they want an experience like a Roku or an Apple TV experience. So those are the fast-growing categories, the connected TVs and the, set, and, and the standalone streaming boxes. Um, the, uh, so we expect that in the future, uh, not too distant future, those will be the two leading categories, connected TVs and streaming boxes. That'll be the way people access video on their TVs. Um, and uh, um, the, uh, it's, it's really uh, on the... Um, Set-top box side, it's it's a two-horse race. Uh, Roku and Apple uh, TV are kind of neck and neck generally in, in, the, in the amount of volume that we move. Uh, we tend tend to do a little better uh, in the holiday season when because um, uh, we have a, 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 a leading price point, forty-nine ninety-nine. Um, but uh, uh, there are other there are other products out there. Google TV, obviously. And I think what's going to happen is um, the content. You know, the content has to support all of these platforms, right? They have to build apps. It's like on the phone where you build apps for iOS, you build apps for Android. How many of those platforms are you going to support? Well, you know, like the first one you got to do, right? And then the second one, they kind of fall over the wire on. The third one better be important or they're not going to do it at all and forget about fourth, fifth, and sixth. Um, that's probably the way it's going to shake out here. So right now you're really looking at Roku and, and Apple TV being the biggest platforms uh, and Xbox, um, and, and that's kind of it. And, and there's a lot of good spirit in the content community going beyond, I think, you know, su supporting a lot of different, supporting random Blu-ray players and supporting, you know, this device and that device. And I don't think that's going to go on forever. I think it's going to kind of come back and consolidate. There's going to be a few winners here who, um, who have broadly deployed uh, platforms. Um, Let's see, any points I want to make here? So let's talk about Roku specifically a little bit. Uh, any, any of you guys have Rokus at home? Nice. <clears throat> Good. It's just about everybody. Sounds like some of you are probably going to be winning your second or your third Rokus. Um, here, I have one. A, uh, it is. They're very little. They're little and getting smaller all the time. Uh, in fact, we have this, the streaming stick. That's how little, so, say so long to the set-top box. It's basically like a thumb drive. You jam it at the back of your TV. I'll demo this in a minute. Um, very cool. Here we have a, a 3M has made a projector with a Roku built in. You just take one of these streaming sticks, and it's, it's, uh, it's the industrial design is made to fit the streaming stick in there. This thing you can put in your pocket, um, you know, great for college students or taking on trips or, you know, um, putting in a bedroom or whatever. Uh, it's a cool product. Um, so, yeah, we sold about, we sold about three million, over three million of these. Um, and, and this is, you know, we got the holiday season. It's going to be huge for us coming up here. Um, we, um, we are expanding beyond set-top boxes, both with the streaming stick 
um, where the, the primary way that we sell this is um, by bundling it with TVs, um, uh, but also by building the Roku service inside of TVs. Uh, that's, that's in the cards for the future. Um, we, uh, we have about 600 channels now, 600, more than 600 channels. Um, they range from, you know, uh, HBO and Netflix all the way down to um, you know, veg- vegetable TV, <laughs> uh, Mormon, uh, Mormon ch- the Mormon channel is very popular, um, all kinds of uh, special interest stuff. And it's just so awesome to see how democratized content distribution is really becoming um, so anybody can publish so long as you're not infringing copyrights and doing anything too illegal or, or uh, obscene or anything like that. Um, the, um, we're adding about a new channel every day. So um, they're coming on quick. We have about 35,000 registered developers. So it's a platform that a lot of people are enthusiastically developing against. Um, and uh, uh, we were the first with, uh, with Netflix. We were the first with HBO Go. Uh, we were the first with, uh, with Epix and, and Major League Baseball uh, over the Internet to the TV. Um, and it's available in the U.S., U.K., Ireland, um, and there's a there's a there's the box right there in case you couldn't see it when I was holding it. <clears throat> they are available in Target, Walmart, Amazon.com. Go out and get yourself one. Price is forty nine ninety nine to uh, ninety nine ninety nine. So um, very aggressive price points. Um, we we focus a lot on price. We focus a lot on value. Um, keeping the platform lightweight is, uh, is a paramount uh, uh, part of our strategy. Um, we do not want these things to get fat and expensive. We do not want the software to get bulky and slow. Uh, they're intended to be fast and light and inexpensive. Um, a little more detail on the, on the uh, streaming stick. Um, it's amazing how this is, uh, how much press we get on this and how it seems to have really captivated people's imagination. I think in part because, you know, no more set-top boxes. People hate set-top boxes. Um, so no more set-top box. Um, and in part because, I don't know, it looks like a stocking stuffer, I guess. It's, it's uh, you know, people imagine it as, you know, a 1999 stocking stuffer. It's not 1999. It costs more than that. But it's not hard to see how, you know, the direction we're going here. Um, so um, it's, uh, it's, it's really uh, an exciting product. It uses MHL, which is a, a new standard. It's kind of like HDMI. But it's powered. You know, the way USB is powered, you probably charge your phone off a of USB sometimes. Um, uh, MHL is basically a powered version of HDMI with a few more features. So not all TVs work with it, um, which is part of the reason why our initial strategy is to bundle with the TV. So, for example, this uh, Insignia over here, um, a TV you can, got, you can get a Best Buy, uh, comes as a Roku-ready TV. It has a purple... Uh, a purple MHL jack on the back here, and um, you know you just pop this thing in, and uh, and you got Roku, no no plugging it into the wall. Um, I can demo it for you. Take a look at that. Let's see. Well, that's the uh, that's the projector I showed you, um, which is available also. You can get these on Amazon right now. Great Christmas present. My I, I brought this to my daughter's college dorm room, showed it to her. Um, and, uh, and she lives in a sorority, uh, Tri-Delta, up at Stanford. And I had this, just this crowd of sorority girls checking out my, my little projector. Uh, they were so excited. You know, perfect dorm room accoutrement. Uh, so these are going to be big, I think. Let me, let me go ahead and show you the Roku stick. It's the same as the Roku box, uh, actually. The same service, um, same hardware platform, even. Just doesn't have to have a, any kind of power supply or anything. Um, so here we go. Um, I'm always a little flummoxed to demo Roku, not because it's complicated, but because it's so easy. It's just like it's a short demo. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I can show you what we've got in here. Uh, obviously, we have Netflix. We started out as really the Netflix box. That's all it did was stream Netflix, and Netflix is still by far our most popular channel. Um, our second most popular channel is actually Pandora. Um, and uh, I'll go through the list. That's music, though. Music is wildly successful on our platform. People love it. Hulu Plus is a great service. Um, you know, it's seven or eight bucks a month, 
and um, they, they're very good at getting current release TV shows. Um, so it's not last year's or whatever. It's it's very current and it's very you know prime time, well promoted, popular stuff in here. Uh, my wife and I just just inhaled Downton Abbey, two seasons of Downton Abbey, and I think about five days <laughs> on on Hulu Plus. It was really fun. Um, and uh, you know Amazon is our most popular movie store, um, so it's easy to go into these things and um, and uh, and just pick a movie. Retrieving catalog. It seems to be pretty fast. You guys must not be checking your email. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, it's all Wi-Fi, obviously. Um, uh, the uh, streaming stick doesn't have an Ethernet port in it or anything like that. Um, so yeah, you can just come in here and buy movies. Um, Vampire Hunter, watch trailer, um, which I'll spare you the Vampire Hunter trailer. Uh, let's go look at something else. What else is in here? Um, not everything is, is video. You know, Facebook um, is fun. Uh, um, Fox News, TED, uh, Jeopardy. Jeopardy, we, have, uh, we do have games, um, Angry Birds. Uh, we have Angry Birds. We have uh, Wheel of Fortune, a lot of different games. Um, uh, HBO Go is, uh, is, is really an amazing success story. Uh, HBO Go has... Um, it has more HBO than any other way, um, uh, than any other uh, platform for HBO. So, you know, um, it's, uh, it's the richest, deepest library uh, place where you can get everything. Um, super compelling service um, and, uh, and, and became very popular very quickly right after it was launched. Okay, stop checking your email. <laughs> HBO. I don't know why that's not going. Go on one more time. See if it comes faster. We just uh, we just added um, uh, with Dish Network um, a, uh, a a whole bunch of um, foreign language programming. So that's another huge and growing audience on Roku platform or folks who want to get um, programming from their homeland, um, things like uh, Hindi programming, Tamil, uh, stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really growing and, and lucrative marketplace in the Roku platform. Come on, HBO, go. Here we go. Um, all right, well, that took a little longer than I would have liked for it to have, but uh, here we go, it's working. It's fun to just navigate around and see what uh, movies you can buy. They have a Halloween collection here. They've got things by genre. Um, Hunted. Uh, let's go ahead and watch, uh, watch a trailer. See if the video works. HBO has a great encode quality. Um, you know, it ranges by... We, we don't do the encoding. We depend on the, on the content partners. So um, their, their video usually looks really good. Looks like we're going to get the full boat here, too. And you can't really probably appreciate it on the projector too much, but if you can see the TV here, um, you know, it looks as good as, or better than, than probably your cable connection. And this Insignia TV. Oops. A little too early in the morning for that. Okay, um, so you get the idea. Well, why don't I go ahead and I'll show you the um, the channel store real quick. Hello. So the channel store is where the 600 channels live, uh, and that's that's a fun spare time activity. A lot of people ask whether um, when we're uh, w when somebody sets up, you know, they pick a few channels, they pick Netflix, they pick Amazon, they pick Hulu. Uh, do they ever go back and? Um, and add more channels, um, or, or are these guys just kind of lost in the abyss of 600 channels? And the answer is yes, they add new channels all the time. And, and when exciting new channels come online, like we just launched Voodoo, for, exa for example, boom, pop right straight into the top 10 very quickly within the first week or two. Um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people adding it in, right away. 
Um, so, you know, this is, a, this is these are the list of channels. We have, you know, featured channels, and we organize them in all different kinds of ways and recommend things, and um, a couple different movie channels, lots of different music offerings, um, uh, lots of different news offerings, sports offerings, MLB, NBA, um, on, uh, uh, if you're into science and technology, which I know you are. Um, there's tons of stuff in here, CNET. I, I like watching the TED events. Those are cool. And uh, streaming media is in here somewhere. I think I might have even added the streaming media channel. Let's see if it's actually here. Oop. Checking for updates. It was mercifully quick. Um, Oh, yeah, there it is. We added that last night. I'm not going to play any because I want you to focus on me. But, uh, but yeah, this even streaming stream media conference has a channel, and you can have a channel, too. Okay, I'm just about to, ready to, to wrap it up here. Just a couple more slides. Um, this is a, a chart that's showing the, the growth and the number of hours over the last couple of years. So really important trend for Roku, and I think representative of streaming in general um, going up to 12 hours or so here per week on average, um, and uh, and you know we expect that to keep growing until you know it's it's 30, 40 hours per week, which is what the average is for TV in general. Um, this is the list of our most popular channels. Um, covered some of this, but Netflix number one, Pandora number two, Hulu, an awesome service. I highly uh, recommend it. Amazon's our most popular movie store, but Vudu, we, we just added a few weeks ago, and it's shot right up into the list, the, the top ten here. HBO Go, also a wonderful success story. Um, Crackle has a lot of, is free, has a lot of ad-supported movies and things like that. Angry Birds is actually a game. Um, <clears throat> so there's lots of, lots of exciting things there. You know, what do we see? We see these different categories. Um, there, there are Internet brands that are selling mainstream content. There are uh, internet brands that are selling really internet exclusive content, and then there are the established brands selling you know the established content. Um, all of these uh, characters are creating new business models um, and finding ways to make money on the internet successfully. Um, and you know it's it's uh, there's, a, there's a lot of experimentation, and we are partners with them in that experimentation to try new things, whether it's ad supported or whether it's subscription or whether it's you know, transactional or all, all different kinds of ways to skin the cat, whether how we package things, bundle things. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the, the kind of the elephant in the room on all of this is, is uh, to what degree is the Internet um, and streaming, to what degree is it cannibalizing the bundle, the pay TV bundle, um, the, the $900 a year cash cow that, that you know, puts food on uh, the, the, uh, the content community's table. Um, and the, you know, the, the short answer in everything that we look at is that those ARPUs are doing well. They're growing. Um, and if you look at the streaming ARPUs in addition, the ARPU being average revenue uh, per user, the annual ARPU for streaming, you know, a Netflix user is, a uh, streaming user is 100 bucks a year. A Hulu streamer is 100 bucks a year. There's 200 bucks right there if you have Netflix and Hulu. Um, Amazon, you know, let's say you do, uh, a movie a month at four bucks a movie, you know, there's another 50 bucks or so. So that's 250 bucks just on those three services alone. And then we got the other 600 plus channels to, to bring into the mix. So it's real money. And, uh, and our view is that the, that the copy, that the content community is, is, uh, is, is able to have its, have its cake and eat it too here where, you know, to continue to, to reinforce pay TV value proposition, the traditional value propositions. While um, while selling more content uh, on on the internet, um, HBO Go is a is a great success story. I think along these lines, where we don't get paid for HBO Go, but um, but it does drive demand for our boxes. We love HBO Go. Our consumers love HBO Go, and it makes them love HBO and and feel better about paying that big monthly bill that they pay every 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 month. So if you are, um, you know, an HBO customer, even though you might not be watching HBO on your cable box anymore, um, more likely than ever to want to pay that bill. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's a good, um, you know, a lot of people are kind of saying, well, it's, you know, it's Roku versus cable. I don't think that's the case. Uh, they're both growing, um, and, uh, and they're both going to be around for a long, long time. Um, so we still have work to do. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of new... 
uh, kind of unexplored areas now that now that we've really gotten into the mainstream. Uh, advertising support is um, uh, folks really still aren't getting paid much uh, for advertising on the internet. I mean, even the DVR is only now just starting to represent itself in the in the uh, television advertising market, and, and you know. Nielsen is, is, is reporting well against DVR viewing and, and it's counting in the ratings. Well, Internet's not really counting in the ratings yet, um, so that's a, that's a big issue that needs to be solved. The, the content community needs to get paid for those ad impressions. And I feel those ad impressions are more valuable even than the traditional linear impression because obviously they, they have the potential for interact, interactivity um, and, uh, and, and engagement. Virtual MVPD, that idea is this notion of a cable operator or a satellite operator type service, a linear plus on-demand service that is delivered over the internet. So it's not limited to a footprint of any, uh, of, uh, of any sort, uh, maybe contractually limited, but not, not uh, infrastructure limited. Um, and you're going to start seeing these pretty soon. You'll start seeing services that come and are, um, and are, you know, either offered by major MSOs, uh, major cable operators, or competitive with them in um, offering the complete full boat uh, TV value proposition that we've all come to know and love, but that's over the internet. So you can get it from anywhere, uh, and you can just have a Roku box, and that's how you get your TV. Um, so that's, that's coming, and that's going to be um, a great value proposition for consumers, and we're going to work hard to support that. Um, another thing that, that uh, well, what I'm spending day in and day out is, is um, just trying to find business models to get parity between the, um, you know, the traditional linear offering and the Internet, um, which means finding ways for the content guys to get paid. The, the, the methods to get paid on uh, linear are well established. They function. They work. Internet still fits and starts and, and, and still a lot of experimentation. That's really what I'm here to do is to is to work with the content community and, and explore those new business models, try things, and, and find ways to get money in the door uh, in exchange for their hard work on their good content. Um, and it's a fun job, even though um, my last metaphor, um, this guy looks kind of like me, so I had to throw it up there. Um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, internet, um, the internet ARPUs you know, need to keep growing. Um, these, uh, these, uh, the content selection needs to keep growing. It's a lot of hard work. It's going to take another 15 years. It'll probably be what I do until I retire. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, but uh, it's, it's fun. And, uh, and you know, now that we're opening our office here in L.A., I look, in, I look forward to engaging with, uh, with you all. And I do see some familiar faces, people I know already. Hopefully I'll know all of you by the end of my Roku tenure. Um, and... Uh, I guess uh, it's a good time to ask questions. Great. That's my show. Great presentation. Um, I just wanted to ask a, a two-part question. Um, what would you see as the, the biggest uh, threat to uh, Roku, um, really with the extent to which smart TVs, smart TVs are going to try and adopt this model of presenting, you know, different content channels in this format. And the second part is if you could prognosticate on um, perhaps the future of Netflix, there was a, an article in The Economist saying that it's, um, you know, it could be, uh, could be bankrupt in a few years. So just wanted to hear your opinions on that because that would <clears throat> obviously affect Roku. Um, okay, so threats, on, threats for Roku. Um, I really don't believe that the connected TV is uh, is that much of a threat. You know, honestly, we put way more work into our software and our service than any CE provider, um, and I expect that we can stay out in front of really just about everybody just by sheer focus and energy and investment uh, in terms of the quality of the service. Um, so we'll be able to keep selling our boxes. You know, the fact is that people only upgrade their TVs once every 10 years or so. Um, and, you know, devices like this, think of them more like cell phones where people are upgrading them every year or two. And it's only, you know, 50 bucks and, and you know, going down over time. So um, I don't really see why people have to get a new TV to get a new Internet service um, or, or an updated Internet service. So I think the, uh, the standalone category will stay strong. Um, you know, obviously Apple TV is, uh, is our big competitor, um, and they have, a, they have good experience in their Apple. Um, 
But you know, like, as with as with cell phones, there is a, a non-Apple universe, and that's the that's the universe we look to win in. Um, there's going to be competition there as well. It's not going to be a cakewalk, um, but that's really our space. And you know, we're able to take the critical mass of what we're of what we're building there, and and then walk that into the CE guys and say, you know, uh, a lot of them are just saying, you know, hey. Um, uh, we have you know 20 guys, and you have 200 people developing. Yours is better. Um, we can actually uh, work out business models that are all around more compelling for the TV uh, makers as well. So I think you're going to start seeing that happen, uh, where we're going to be replacing some of these uh, one-off efforts that go on in the various uh, 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 CE guys. As far as Netflix is concerned, um, you know they're doing phenomenally on our platform, and that's kind of the way we see it. Uh, it keeps growing as, uh, in terms of the viewership, um, the popularity. Now, you know, there's a lot of disruption in the market right now uh, in terms of, well, and with Netflix as they switch business models uh, from, you know, from packaged media to streaming. And it doesn't surprise me, frankly. I mean, you go through that kind of a change, um, you know, there's going to be disruption. But um, Reed Hastings and crew, they're, they're incredibly smart uh, individuals. And, they're well capitalized, and you know, I just I, I I don't buy the bankruptcy thing at all. Another question right here. How 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 did you compete against um, Google TV, and are you going to provide a browser on your platform? Sorry, I, can you repeat it? How did you compete against Google TV? Oh, Google TV. And. Uh, are you going to provide a browser on your platform? Yeah, you can get a browser actually as an app today on Roku. Um, uh, but I agree with you, that's a, that, that, that's a cool feature to kind of focus on and, and, and keep making better. Uh, Google TV um, is, is another important uh, uh, prospective competitor for us. So far, we've been out executing them. And, uh, you know, through focus and experience and, and you know, blood, sweat, and tears, that's our goal. Um, and and we, we talk about them all the time. Uh, I know Vizio just launched a product called CoStar based on the platform. You know, reviews haven't been good. So as long as that continues to be the case, um, uh, our job is easy. We don't expect that to, to always be uh, where it's at. But um, uh, we, uh, you know, we're, we're, here, we're here to compete. And, um, and so far, uh, we're winning. Hi. Shahar with Engage Magazine. I have a request and a question. We have a channel on Roku called Buzz and Biz. So the request is for a business category. And I want to know if you have any plans on going to South America with the boxes. Uh, a business category yes. is the question? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Do we not have a business category? I'm, I'm new, so I need to make a business category. I'm going to take that action item. I think that's an excellent idea. And, um, and in terms of expansion, we don't have any announced plans to go into Latin America. We absolutely are going to expand internationally, um, but nothing that I can speak to publicly. Uh, but yes, you can count on us um, being reasonably aggressive about uh, international expansion. Mm -hmm. So this idea of uh, virtual MV MVPDs, um, a lot of the adoption of these kinds of devices, I think, especially with you know the virtual cable operator, virtual distributors is going to be dependent on the ability to offer linear channels. So where do you see, given the way the industry is trending right now, when or where do you see Roku starting to be able to do something like that? Or are you just mired so the, the the something cases? like that, are you talking about linear licensing channels. linear channels? Offering linear streaming. Yeah. Um, well, we do offer live events already. So you know, the notion of offering kind of real-time linear is, is, is technically fine today. We don't have plans to be an MVPD, to go out and cut deals with all the television networks and sell a bundle. Um, but uh, we know uh, that it's happening out there in the marketplace by folks, by well-capitalized folks uh, that you might expect who, uh, who have every ability to make that happen. Obviously, the negotiations are, you know, clash of the titans and that sort of thing. And that's why it's uh, taking a long time and, you know, will continue to be a while. But um, all indications are that it's going to happen, and I think next year. Yeah. Are you uh, concerned at all with net neutrality or uh, um, data caps? Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, yeah, sure, we're concerned about it. Um, and, uh, and, you know, uh, we, um, uh, I even indicated earlier that, you know, it's, a, it's an important issue for us. I'm talking about just the speed, and it's really the consumer experience that we probably worry about the most, you know, just having 
things not work, either for technical reasons or for policy reasons. Um, but this hasn't been an issue yet, and it's something that folks have been talking about for 10 years, um, and it, it you know, still hasn't become an issue. Um, and you know, I think the reality is that the internet um, service provider marketplace is getting sufficiently competitive that um, you know, I, I just don't think you can bet against the internet um, as, as, as uh, being the way that people want to get video. And any competitive internet service provider is going to need to cater to that desire. And if they start sabotaging people's ability to watch video, folks will just switch. So um, I, it's not at the top of our list of concerns, but it's top five, I would say. Question over here to your left. Hi there. Uh, one of the things you've seen happen in the, the streaming music world is the kind of the advent of these digital lockers. Amazon has one, Google has one, where people's personal libraries are stored in the cloud and streamed to their devices. And, and, and in, the, in the video world, that has kind of always been on the horizon. You've seen ultraviolet. You, know, you buy a copy, you get a digital copy as well that can be streamed to you, but it hasn't really caught on. Do you see a future for for digital locker services in terms of people's personal uh, movies, TV episodes, and so forth? Yeah, I see a future for it. I mean, I'll be honest, I, I believe in streaming. Um, I believe that, you know, the stuff is more ephemeral than, than permanent, and, and permanent ownership is kind of an artifact of physical media. Um, and, you know, music is definitely kind of moving in that streaming direction. And, and, you know, if everything's in the cloud, you know, why own it type of thing? Um, but, um, but, I'm not like everybody. A lot of people want to watch the same movie over and over again. Um, and, uh, you know, or people have kids and they want to own stuff, or people have their music library and they want to own that. So there's absolutely a place for it. Um, absolutely a place for it. But uh, I, I would say, in general, you know, the fact that um, as we move towards getting everything in the cloud, um, you know, it's, it's revenue streams like uh, rental transactions, like subscriptions, like ad support that are going to be uh, more important than, um, you know, download to own types of things. Yeah. C could you talk a little bit about the, the search that you just launched and about the expansion into lower tier channels uh, across all of the, the Roku channels or, you know, a, a larger number than the, the, the ones that you are currently including in the search capability? Yeah, thanks for reminding me. We just launched uh, a cross-provider search. Historically, you would have to go into like HBO or into Amazon and search inside there. Now we have a cross uh, cross provider search, but it's uh, it's limited to um, to really our most popular uh, movie channels like HBO and Amazon and Vudu and things like that. Um, and uh, and expanding that is something that we need to do. Um, so yes, um, uh, I, I don't we don't have an announced kind of roadmap or anything like that, but it's obviously it's obviously a need. Um, we need to. You know, the fact that this is a TV user interface, we need to keep things simple. Um, so we can't have, you know, type Star Wars. We can't have 600 results when you type Star Wars. Um, so that needs to be balanced. Um, but, um, but at the same time, um, you know, we're just getting started on search, and that's a, that's a, a functionality that we will always be improving.